I'm going to show Yvonne how to place a saddle on a horse's back. Okay, so this is Remmer, and uh, he's got an interesting back because uh, he had a kind of a scoliosis. So he's got a little bit of a twist through his back here, which is why he used to have so much trouble with saddles that were too narrow. And uh, he's also lost a bit of muscle because we, we've just been, uh, we just shipped into England and back. So usually he has a bit more muscle than this on his back. So you can see he's not very fit right now. But it doesn't matter because as soon as you start riding him, he starts to pick up all his muscles and use his back and, you know, he just needs to get fit again. So uh, what's going to help uh, with that is that you don't change your saddle at all. It's just that your shimming might change, but um, he'll, he'll be just fine. So I want to show you how to fit that, that saddle. Now, first of all, I want you to put your hand here on his shoulder. And can you feel how there's kind of a, a blade at the back there? Feel the back of the shoulder blade? Yeah, it's like okay, a now see him move it then? It dips in there. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a dip. Like you can just feel it like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where his shoulder blade is when he's at rest. See, his, his leg is just straight under him. Now, keep your hand here, and I'm going to pick up his knee, and you're going to feel his shoulder blade come backwards. And while I hold it, you're then going to locate the new position of where it is. Okay? okay? So I'll pick up his leg. And I just hold his knee up. Now slide your hand, hand back, way back, till you find wow. the edge. Yeah, now so keep cute. your fingers there. Ooh. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Now keep your fingers there. He goes back to rest. And here's where the back of his shoulder blade is. So that's how much movement he tends to get. Right? Now over the years that I've been developing him, his whole shoulder apparatus has come back and his withers have come back. So his back kind of looks shorter than it ever used to be. And his neck is longer, all right, which is exactly what I want. I want lots of neck in front of me and to be sitting over the hindquarters so that he can lift that. So now when you put your saddle on, you want to make sure that you have lots of clearance for this scapula that comes way back to here. And so you'll find that um, the stirrup uh, bar is what I want behind that furthest furthermost section. So here's the stirrup bar right here and that's the part that I imagine five inches back from here. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. All right. Now we need to know how to shim and the reason we want to shim is because like this saddle sits down kind of low on him here and that's what we want to have happen because when it's too low like that you lift it up with the shims and that's what gives all the space. If it fits the horse at rest, then it doesn't give him any space to move his shoulders. All right? So just as you felt when I picked that saddle up in the front, you had then suddenly all that room. That's what these saddles are designed to do. Right? So then they fit the horse in motion. And now you can move your shims around according to what your horse needs. Okay. All right? So uh, just behind you are some shims. Bring me two thick shims and one thin shim. When you look at Rama's body, he's really uphill which means that his withers are a lot higher than the highest point of his back. And that's really good, because he never used to be like that. He used to be quite level, if not a little bit downhill. And since putting him in good saddles and riding him so that he can use himself and bring his shoulders up, his posture changed dramatically. When we looked at the saddle and how much we had to lift it up to make it you know, kind of level instead of you know, dipping down here on his spine, it looks like about this much space, like two shims that would need to lift the saddle, okay? And there's a couple of ways to do it. First of all, I look at the horse's back and I go, this is pretty, uh, it's a reasonably level back, but it just dips down a little bit in the front here. He's resting his, his legs and just stand him up. That's it. Okay, so it just dips down a little bit here, but when he starts to move, that'll change. Like, as a horse starts to move, their back comes up. Like that. Wow. Oh. Right? And mm -hmm. see how that levels up here? Yep. Okay. So I want to create some space as well as keep the saddle up in the front because it's too wide for him at rest. All right? So I can do this. I can put one wedge a little bit, I mean, one shim a little bit sideways like that. And then the other one over the top for his shoulder. So now I've, I've got space under here. See how I've staggered them? I've got space under there. 
and I have a nice long kind of wedge shape to come back. If this horse was really hollow here and lacking a lot of muscle, then I would put my shims like this, just up the front. And then the air in the Theraflex pad will fill in all these areas so that you don't have, you know, a big drop off. And why do you have this curve pointing to the front of the horse? This curve gives more room for the curve of the scapula. Okay. If I had a horse with a really hollow back, then I would put my shims in this kind of configuration. Okay, so it's almost like you're putting them where the back should be for a perfect exactly. back. Exactly. I try to imagine where that should be. Now, obviously, this is not going to work for him because he's not hollow. He's just got a natural little dip right here, which is mainly at rest. Okay, so you said this for this part of his back and then this for his, his shoulder. shoulder. And now I'm going to lift the saddle perfectly. So let's put the saddle on top and see what that looks like. Okay. So now I'm just going to put the saddle on top of that. Make sure they haven't moved. And now you can see that this gives him lots of clearance up here. And the saddle is more level. All right. So this looks, the canter looks a little bit higher than the pommel, but once you sit on it, it brings that down. And also when the, when the horse starts moving, his rib cage comes up. And so then the saddle will sit exactly the way you want when you're in motion. Okay, it was great, like kind of knowing where his scapula, like I feel like I know where his scapula comes to now. So just being able to do this, so I can feel that the clearance is gonna be there. Yeah, and when you're on him, you'll feel the same thing. So I try to again envision, I go, here's the stirrup bar. Is it five inches from the back of his scapula, right? At least five to six inches would be great. Because now he's got plenty of room and that saddle's not gonna get in his way. Okay. Okay, so now you understand how that works. We're just gonna put these inside of the pad. Okay. 